I'm Hef, and today we're going to rip your player's face off. Let's look back. 20 years ago, we had these guys. We had Real Player, QuickTime, Windows Media. It was really awesome that we could play video in the browser, but we couldn't do much with the controls, the UI, the face of the player. They were black boxes. And then 15 years ago, we got Flash, and the face started to get a little bit looser because we could actually do things with the controls. In fact, Flash didn't have any default controls. We had to create the controls, but Flash was still a plugin, wasn't integrated, wasn't negative. And so then 10 years ago, we got HTML5 and we were in this real life Travolta versus Cage face off situation where players had to decide are you going to lead with Flash and fall back to HTML5? Are you going to lead with HTML5 and fall back to Flash? And then VideoJS said, we're going to build the controls in HTML and CSS and use the same across both. And other players followed and we got real close to to the face being just separated from the rest of the player. But there are browser limitations that prevented us from just making Flash look exactly like the video tag API. And so we had to build these proprietary frameworks to set up that system where the UI could communicate consistently between HTML5 and Flash. And then five years ago, we got a couple of new technologies. We got web components, which I talked about last year. And good news, I was right. We got everybody building on web components now. We got CBS and, and Apple and BBC working with web, web components, so, so I can stop talking about them. We also got ES6, which brought in things like setters and getters that could do things beyond just store the value. And all of to say, what that allows us to do now is, is build an HTML tag that exposes the same API as the video tag API. And so what that means is that now is... Is the time to just rip your player's face off. Rip, just like a band-aid, just rip it. Just, just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yeah, but who cares, right? Well, the BBC cares. They say, this means that the UI is loaded separately from the main player and enables us to produce different UIs more easily. For example, a child-friendly version with larger buttons or additional features. Yes. Exactly, right? What are they saying here? They have two different UIs. Depending on the context, they can use one or the other, and they're just swapping the media element underneath the two, and all the streaming technology that they're building into that element gets comes along with it, right? And you can extend that analogy a little bit. You could, you could use, be using the different JavaScript UI frameworks. You could be using React on one side and Vue on the other, and as long as you're architecting this way, you could be swapping the media element underneath and that's pretty powerful. Does anybody remember CSS Zen Garden? Probably not. But but this is where I first kind of like understood the power of the separation of concerns in the UI. Like it was an example of you could use the same HTML and bring in a simple style sheet and completely change the look of the page. Maybe a more accessible example is like Winamp skins, right? There were thousands of these. This middle one is Matt McClure's favorite. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that everybody wants an anime background on their video player, but can we bring a little bit of fun back to our media players? This goes the other way too. I mean, so imagine you have a UI and you want to use that across two different media elements. You can do that. So why would you want to do that? Imagine you're using JW Player for your main content and you want to use the same UI for YouTube embeds. Like in this case, you could actually make that happen. And what it's setting up is like this open, flexible ecosystem where if you want to focus on the media element and the streaming technology and the quality of experience, you can focus there. And if you want to focus on the user interaction and really interesting features on the UI layer, you can focus there. And, and it's all compatible and we're not just duplicating each other's work. I remember a conversation with Casey Acolini about seven years ago where well, he was building the Akamai player and I was building VideoJS and the conversation went like this. It was like, what did you do for this thing? Oh, I did this? Yeah, okay, we did the same thing. What'd you do for that thing? It's like, oh, well, you did that too? Okay, yeah, we did the same thing. And it's just like for a half an hour, just realizing that we basically built the same base player. We don't need to do that anymore. The, the web is an open platform and video is an is as important to the web as text and images. So let's stop building closed ecosystems for web video players. We don't have to anymore. In fact, let's look to existing standards and the way that the web already works to help us do that. It's a crazy idea. How do we do that? 
one, we got to standardize on the video API. Number two, we got to extend that API. And then three, we got to architect for dumb components. What do we mean here? Standardize on the video API. I talked about this last year. Just stop making things like stop. Like functions we don't need. Yeah, stop doing that. Do you know the difference between pause and stop? Pause is like, I'm going to the bathroom. Stop is, I'm done with this video. I'm not going to watch any more of that. So what that means is that on the web, every other link on the page is the stop button. So we don't need an extra API for that. We don't need to rename the functions and all that stuff. Just like name them the same as the video tag API and we'll be in a better place. And then from there, we need to extend the video API. A lot of you are thinking like, well, what about playback quality and ads and things like that? It's like, yes, th this is something we need to solve for in extending the video tag API. Uh, but I, I don't think this is going to be as bad as you might be thinking, because at the end of the day, we don't have to solve for like the entire crazy ecosystem of ads. We just need to understand that there's some state that needs to be exposed to the UI so that it can reflect that state to the user and provide functionality that allows the UI to communicate back the user intention. And that's, that's, that's a, actually a small portion of the complexity of, of ads. And so it's not gonna be nothing, but I think we can figure it out. I started a project on video dev, video dev GitHub. So called media UI extensions, you get it, check it out. And if you want to help with this project, it's brand new and, uh, let's do it. Uh, then number three, so we got an architect for dumb components. What does that mean? When I first started playing with this concept, I built it this way, where I had a play button that had a direct reference to the media element so that it could make requests directly to the media element and, and listen for events and respond those. Anyway, no, just don't, don't do that. Instead, bring in a, a controller, something that sits in between the UI and the media so that the UI can be dumb and just like emit events and and receive state and and the, and the controller can then translate those those requests to the media and and translate the events back to state for the UI and it just simplifies a lot and shout out to Raheem all we're a VDS player for helping me come to this conclusion but what does that do uh it allows us to make like a dumb face uh like dumb components that are easier to build for one uh, makes them more shareable. It means that we're not repeating logic between these components because a lot of these UI components actually share some of that logic, share needs of some of that logic. It centralizes the logic so that as you're writing tests or just understanding how the system works, you don't have to be poking all over the place. And there's a bonus that can allow you to control multiple media elements at the same time. I don't know if you realize this, but there there used to be a media controller in the browser that would allow you to control multiple media elements. You know, nobody used it; it got deprecated. But we could actually re recreate this in JavaScript today, and that's kind of cool. So let's check out some demos then. So show the play button. Here's a real live example of what that play button can can look like. Here we have media play button and it's dumb. It's just I can click this. It's, it's not. It's not causing an error to click it. It's like the. It's like the form button in HTML. It's just you can click it and it's not not doing anything until something cares about it. Uh, it's got the media paused attribute uh, because that's how the video API works, so that it can show the play icon. If you remove that attribute, it shows the pause icon, and it's just kind of simple like that. You can add alternative content and other icons if you want, but it stays pretty simple. Let me drop that play button into a media controller. So here we have a setup as you have a parent media controller. And in that you have a video element in the media slot. So web components have this concept of a slot that is kind of like a, a first class element within the tree of the parent element. And I like to think of the slot as like the VCR slot. When you add on the media play button into that that same controller, and now I can click the play button, and it's it's emitting an event that's just saying uh, like I'm requesting that the media play, and that's being translated by the controller down to the media element, and then that's emitting events back up, which are translated as state and passed down to the UI so that the icon can change, and hopefully you're seeing how this is all coming together. 
Uh, and then, you know, the last demo we're showing is, is I talked about being able to swap the media element underneath the controls. And so on the left, we have an element that is HLS video. It's pulling in HLS JS and just exposing the video tag API. On the right, we have YouTube video, which is pulling in the, the YouTube video player and exposing the video tag API. And so on top of that, you know, within that controller, we've just got the same thing happening on both sides. And and the UI is 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 just dumb to to what's happening underneath the video tag API. It doesn't care because it all just works the same way, and it's and it's predictable. And these individual elements, HLS video and YouTube video, can be can be developed completely independently as long as we're standardizing on that on that video API. These demos were built with a project called Media Chrome that we're working on at Mux. Feel free to check it out. Um, you can actually use some of these components in your own project. Dylan has been working with that on the Demux site. He says, now having worked with Media Chrome on the Demux site, what feels like an absolute superpower is the ability to write and style HTML elements. And yeah, that's exactly what we're going for with the web component side of things. He says, no other player I've used. Is this easy to customize, rearrange controls, swap out icons? Yeah. Uh, and you know, to be clear, Media Chrome is not a player. It doesn't do half the stuff that players do. Um, Dylan is building the player here. He's just he's just starting a little less from scratch because he, he has these UI components that are solving a lot of the logic for him, and he can focus on building the player that he wants to. Starting with those, and hopefully you're starting to see the opportunity here, and that you're excited to rip your player's face off. Let me know if I can help. <laughs>